It is just a huge, huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Dr. Teddy Rothstein, DDS, PhD. He's a double doctor, and he posted a thread called OJW Weight Control yesterday on Dentaltown, and oh my God, is it exploding. It is, uh, it, that, it is so fun. Having practiced every phase of orthodontics and orthopedics for 37 years, he moved from Brooklyn, New York to Portland, Oregon in August 16, where on December 16, 2017, he petitioned the Oregon Board of Dentistry to sanction OJW for dental professionals. He awaits their decision. He invented the appliance and developing the protocol for providing OJW weight control. He provided OJW in Brooklyn, New York, has treated 200 patients, most of them who come from everywhere in the United States, simply because he is the only provider. His dedication to OJW is uh, ojwforweightcontrol.com is his website. On YouTube, just go to Ted Rothstein, T-E-D, Ted, like a TED Talk, and Rothstein, Roth, R-O-T-H-S-T-E-I-N. Remember, it's I before E, unless you're German. Uh, Ted Rothstein, DDS, to view some of the videos he's posts on OJW. But before we get into this, I just want to say that, you know, on the one hand, on the dental town, people are saying this is extremely controversial, but people go to great lengths to lose weight. They have gastric bypass surgery. They have rubber band surgery. I forgot all the names of it. Um, a governor of uh, um, by where you used to live in New Jersey, you were in New York, the governor of New Jersey had surgery and i think it's amazing that people think this is so wild and crazy and out there but i would think having your stomach stapled or gastric bypass surgery would be a thousand times more extreme and not even reversible so so tell everybody what www.ojwforweightcontrol.com tell them tell them what you've done <laughs> oh, that's a how long? How much do you want me to do it in two minutes or how many how many minutes do I have? I would, I would talk. It, you graduated from Temple in 1965. I was born in 62, so I was three years old when you graduated. Um, you studied anthropology. <laughs> you graduated from Ortho School in 73. Um, you can talk all you want. I, I would not uh, cut you off or anything. So, Teddy, tell them what your passion is. What are you doing? When I moved out here, I decided to devote, drop orthodontics. I treated 6,000 patients and pick up here with OJW, but I had to get them to, I had to get the board of dentistry here to, to, to um, uh, pass on it, you know, make it, make weight control. That's the essence of it, weight control. I happen to have invented a device and a protocol that, that operates or that helps people uh, who have a compulsive uh, emotional uh, eating. So this device in its in its absolute minimal minimalist idea is let me show it to you as I'm talking. So perhaps you can see it. You're also going to see another picture maximum mandibula. That's the way surgeons do it. But here's the way I do it. Can you see it? Can you see? Yeah. The so, so if you're listening to this on iTunes, your audio only, what he is, he's an orthodontist. So he puts brackets on the canines and bicuspids. So he's got three, you know, canine, two bicuspid, upper and lower on the right and left. And then he wires them together so you can't open up and eat. OJW stands for orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control which he invented and developed in 1998. That is just, uh, I mean, and when I saw that, I thought, wow, I've never, never thought of that before. And then I thought, can you really wire someone's jaw shut? I said, well, what did they say when someone said, can I really staple someone's stomach or cut out some of their intent? What, what are some more extreme things people do for weight control? Um, well, <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, I, uh, a uh, physician in LA, he invented something called the tongue patch. And this is extreme. Even to me, this is this is barbaric, even to me. So it's a little piece of biocompatible material, like the size of a postage stamp, that he sews on your tongue. So so he sews a tongue patch so that you can't taste and lick ice cream and stuff? It, it, it works by pain. 
It was just too painful to swallow. It's too painful to eat. That's the way the basic, it, the basics of it are. Uh, are mine, mine, of course, is completely mine. Is simply wires that that p- prevent you from going any further open than the your normal physiologic rest position. It, the wires do not hold your jaw up. Your muscles are holding your jaw up. All the wires do, they're neutral, completely neutral. There's no traction on your teeth. There's no vertical pull. You can wear the device forever and ever because you're in your natural rest position. That's kind of why it's, why I call it Rothstein's, uh, uh, R-O-M-W, Rothstein's O-J-W, um, position of mandibular weightlessness. Mandib- because at that point, in rest position, your mandible doesn't weigh anything. Therefore, uh, there's no traction, no vertical traction. So it's safe. <laughs> it's safe. And it limits you to having a, a liquid diet. That's what you. That's the essence of it. And because you're on a liquid diet, if you can manage your liquid diet yourself, great. But if you can't, you know, you can then uh, bring on bring on uh, uh, an RDN, a DN, the dental nutritionist, registered dental nutritionist, and if they can and if they can be of help to you, great. If you have an overlay, then the su- the next overlay is the psychiatric problem, where it's really a psychiatric where you need counseling. You need a therapist to help you work out the origin of your need to have food when you're not hungry. It's like what causes the compulsion, you know? So the object of the jaw wiring is simply to give somebody a a start where they failed at every other method. This gives them a, a place to go to a safe harbor with no mortality rate, you know, with bariatric surgery, you have a 2% chance of, of dying at, at 2%, uh, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2 out of a thousand, two out of a thousand die from bariatric surgery. And with, with medicines, you know, as you, as they call out these lists, when they, when they advertise medicine, you know, they give you, oh, and by the way, it causes, it might cause you have suicidal thoughts, uh, <laughs> You know the list is the list is really funny. So people who would choose me are those people who would not who who would who think bariatric surgery is would kill them, and they also think that medications are are too too unknown, too too risky. So so they choose this method only, and once they choose it, once they want it, they just can't have it. They have to be they're they're vetted. They're they must come to me with a doctor's uh, release, so to speak. But the release is simple. The release says only you may go on a long-term, low-calorie liquid diet. That's all it has to say. Because they don't know anything. Physicians don't know anything about jaw wiring. So it's like sleep apnea. Dentists can treat sleep apnea. Orthodontists can treat sleep apnea. But they just don't do it out of the blue. We cannot diagnose obesity. We cannot diagnose sleep apnea, right? So we take a prescription. Once we have the prescription, once the patient provides us with the prescription, then we're good to go to fit an appliance, fit with an o, fit them with an OJW appliance to limit their mouth so that they can't go any further than the uh, than the physiologic rest p- position, and then once they're once they're in uh, once they're into it, as soon as you're in it, as soon as you enjoy wiring, you are now on a liquid diet, and so in fact, not only on a liquid diet, but I always tell them, I say. If you're a woman, you should, your liquid calorie diet should be limited to somewhere between 800 and 950 calories. And if you're a man, your liquid diet should be limited to, oh, somewhere between maybe 1,200 and 1,300 uh, calories. And if you do that, you'll probably lose, If even if you exercise a little bit, you'll probably lose a pound and a half, maybe two pounds a week at, at most. So it's not drastic. It's meant to lose weight properly because you know if you lose weight too fast, you know what's going to happen. It's going to come back. 
So the criticism, the criticism that people have is, okay, well, what happens when you take the pay, take the waiter when you take the appliance off? Well, what happens is, depends. It really depends on who that person is, what their problem is, how compulsive they were, how dedicated they are to, to, um, to how dedicated and passionate they are uh, to, to achieve the goal weight and to maintain it. Right. That's that's the goal. And we know that people fail. They fail all the time. You know, weight loss is such a weight control is such a, a moving target. You just, you know, you don't quite know what a patient will do. But this is what I know. When I did my survey, I did a clinical survey, a survey, a questionnaire. And, and, and the basic results were people said, we approve of dental professionals providing this service. Thank you for making us aware that, that when you're in jaw wiring, you run a certain risk of of um, aspiration of vomitus and possible demise, how, to which I respond to tell patients, look, oral surgeons do this wiring with their with their wickedest locked lock device, you know, and nothing ever happens that we know about. So if anything, if any serious harm has come to anybody because they were jaw wired by surgery, well, we don't know about it. But I can assure you, that the people who I queried in my questionnaire, they said, they said they accepted it as a, a safe, you know, a fairly safe device. And they, and I asked in the questionnaire, well, what do you think about the possibility of vomitus and, and, and aspiration and, and serious consequences to which I posted on your site, Howard, I posted what the results of that, of the an the answer to that question, and yes, they said yes. We well, you you told us we gave us you gave us the instruments. You told us in the you told us in the informed consent, and and look, I would rather do that than run risk run the risk of death by surgery. So you know, I'm always being assured that. I'm always being assured by people's comments. And if you go to the website and you'll see, you know, in praise of OJW, that people had nice things to say. It has no bad press, you know, has no bad press whatsoever. Sure, people fail. I, and I made a video, Howard. I made a video, I made a long one, you know. And in this video, three days later, my star from Atlanta with a mother who was a psychologist, my star, 23 years old, decided she wanted me to take it off. Oh my, what are we gonna do with this? What a situation. So what we did was this. We acknowledged that people fail at this. Some are successful and some just fail. They don't make it past the first day. This one didn't make it past the first three days and they fail. But take a look at Donna, the picture of the girl in the video wiring herself. And she, there's a happy camper. She could do it. It was a no brainer. The wiring was no problem. She was happy and comfortable. And it's these patients who have always, you know, what do we say? Um, inspired me by saying things that were, that were encouraging. Nothing. I've always, always examined the question. Ted, is this, are you really doing something good? Are you doing something? Are you bringing something to the dental world that will be useful to, 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 to not only the dentists, but, but really useful to help people who are obese and have these, and have these um, uh, eating compulsions, which my device direct, is directed to. So, and the answer is always, I see no reason not to keep on promoting and teaching it. You know, I have a I have a LinkedIn site. I I, I reach I, I have my ability to reach through my professional my LinkedIn network. I have about maybe maybe twenty eight hundred people on my LinkedIn network, and I have a, like a, a an avid group that follows and reads the stuff that I put in the many many articles I put on LinkedIn because I like it. I have no problem about being totally transparent with what I what happens to me. So if people write something bad, I put it on, you know, because I want I want to be the first to know if there if anybody has any real criticism that I haven't already addressed 
But I want to know about it because I, I tell you, Howard, if I thought that the thing wasn't a benefit to some people, I wouldn't want to do it. I, I just wouldn't. I would I would be heartbreaking and broken if something if I if I thought something, you know, was going to go amiss. But I kind of over the course of taking 200 patients, you know, I've learned quite a bit. The informed consent is is key document because it lays out the idea of what of what the patient has to do and what the doctor has to do. And the doctor only has one goal. His goal, his his purpose in this whole being part of the healthcare team, his goal is, is the provider of the device that he puts on people's teeth and he p- p- keeps them safe from, he keeps their teeth and gums and especially their jaw joint safe. Hence, the protocol says, wear the wire for five weeks, keep it five weeks on, then take it off for five days, and let your jaw relax a little bit. And if your jaw is fine, if it passes the three finger vertical test, if it passes that test, then put the wires back on. If you can't get back to me, I've already shown you how to do it, and you know, and you you can do it. You you can see watch Donna doing it on the video, and nobody ever in my survey, nobody ever failed at this because they couldn't do the wiring. The wiring is pretty, pretty easy, you know, like you and I can do our bow tie, you know, it's, it's easy once they learn it. So, so what has kept me going is the nice remarks, the support and encouragement that those people who have succeeded have given me. It's that, it's that confidence that it's a good thing, you know, and I'm always I'm always aware of people who are who don't understand it, who don't you have to understand that people do eat compulsively and do eat emotionally and they do it when they're not hungry and they don't want to do it. And then they're depressed. They are depressed because they are doing it. They don't want to be that way because and and the reasons they the reasons that they eat compulsively are very very enormously. So when I when people find discover discover my service, I I'm very careful about who I pick. I want I I I get their their informed consent, which is a formidable document, you know, formidable, and I get their medical dental history, and in which you know I, I want to know who their who their who their physician is, and it's okay to call, and I want to know who your who your um, counselor. Counselor, who you are, if you're having mental problems, I want to know all those things about you. So, choosing patients is 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 very very important. And if you just you know if you're just uh, uh, willy nilly choosing somebody without carefully vetting and thinking about who you're gonna who you want to treat, you'll have way more failures than you will have successes. So pick your patients like you would do normal, like everybody does that. It's automatic. Orthodontically, I turn down patients. You, anybody, any dentist knows to take down bad candidates. So I vet them. Who's a good candidate? If you're a good candidate, then I'll do it for you. What's nice about about this this service that you provide is that the people are grateful. They truly, they're really very grateful. They tell you so, they're grateful. And they're grateful and... If they don't lose the weight, they're not. They never hold you responsible because they know from the start that your job is to take care of their teeth and their gums and their jaw joint. They're, and they are the ones who are responsible. So when they fail, they understand. They under, They come away with a, a minimum understanding that something. You know, they tried a device. It didn't work for them. Maybe it puts them in a, a thinking, you know, like, wh- why? What, what is happening to me? Why did I fail with this device? And it helps them to move on to another device, another method, another, th- another thing. And if, if ultimately it all fails, then, then, then bariatric surgery, maybe bariatric, maybe may, may weight loss medic, medications are possible. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what happens, but they, or maybe they realize I do need 
a psychotherapeutic counselor to help me to help me you know get over this compulsion but you know so i'm happy to say that 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 the ones who have been successful have been vocal and and have assured me that i should not stop doing this and i am doing the right thing by 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 petitioning the state board of dentistry to allow dental professionals now that's going to happen on june 23rd so we can have another we can have another interview and i can let you know what the board says because i expect the board whatever decision they make they're going to send me a note and they're going to explain to me how they reach their decision and i can't say how they could possibly reach any other decision, given the voluminous documentation I have sent them, how they could, what reason they could have for, for not uh, giving the whole thing a go, a go ahead. So, um, <laughs> stop. <laughs> no, you're amazing. Um, again, you know, in 2013, and just in America, they did a hundred and eighty thousand surgeries bariatric surgeries um gastric bypass gastric bands sleeve gastro gastrectomy um billow pancreatic diversion with duodenal switch well oh, you got the whole list yeah i mean i mean i look at that stuff and uh and then and then uh, it seems like a lot of those patients that get the gastric bypass surgery with all that risk and all the complications they all relapse too it seems like every one of my patients that was weighing you know, four or 500 pounds and got the gastric bypass surgery, they went, they dropped a hundred out of the gate and went down, but they slowly, it seems like they slowly, most of them gained it all back. And look how aggressive the physicians are. The, uh, the, uh, the James Ponce, MD, immediate past president of the ASMBS, the American Society for Meta Metabolic and Gastric Surgery, said that those numbers only estimate the one percent of the people who should have it it's like so he thinks 179,000 surgeries is one percent so he, he's thinking basically 18 million people should be having those surgeries i love your purple hat ojw <laughs> so um you talk about uh the 10 most important facts a provider of this service should know yeah. Maybe the answers to the four most important questions that help you decide that OJW oh, yeah. orthogenic wiring was a service especially that, that had especially, a place. That, especially that question 58, you know, what do you think that of, of the idea that, that, yes, you could come to harm with aspiration of vomitus? And the answers are what I posted, or if you have them there in front of you, you can see how, how people, how people, how the sample responded. Well, do you want to talk about any of those questions? Uh, let me see if I let me see if I have those. Well, the one, the one that was most predominant, the answer that was most predominant is you told me everything I need to know in the informed consent. You get you told me everything. So uh, let's see. Some of them said, oh, what else did some of them? Did? I don't have that particular slide. And, so is this well, something that only orthodontists should do, or do you think that's something general? To Dennis should do, and why do you think you've been, how many years have you been doing this? 18 years. So you've done 200 patients in 18 years, correct? Uh, yeah, because you know why? I'll tell you wh why, what my philosophy was. <clears throat> I'm a professional orthodontist, and I do this as a service to help people who, who might, who, who were good candidates and who want, I didn't do it for, for everybody. You know, I wanted to keep it, I wanted to keep the fee for it high because the higher you keep the fee the more skin people have in the game the more invested they are in succeeding so so i just used to make it if you if you if you make it if you make it for everybody and make it a low price you might as well not do it it's that that's a what, bad what price bad did you approach. charge uh, uh 2785 so um, under $3,000, 2785 yeah. yeah. And you're right, skin in the game is everything. I think it's most amazing on student loan default that the more student loans you have, the less you default. It's the people that only have ten or 15000 that are defaulting all day long. But by the time you have a hundred to two hundred to $300,000 student loans, you never default. 
Um, yeah. Well, here people succeed because they because they're invested in doing well, and they 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 tell they say to me, "But you just showed me how to take the wires off." I said, "If you." If you, after you have paid me three thousand dollars, and you cut the wires off for some for some capricious reason, and you don't put the wires back on, you are now you now should direct your attention to asking yourself why, and perhaps I should see a psychiatrist. People who would pay somebody that much money have confidence in it, and then sabotage and undermine the procedure. If you do that, something, you have to admit, something is wrong and therefore what is it? It just takes you to another another level of thinking about your weight control problem. Did I answer a question? Yeah. Did, did I ramble or did I answer a question? I'm not sure. So tell me about the thread, the discussion on Dental Town, the thread. It's a very, very, um, uh, the, the, <laughs> the thread exploded. What, what are your thoughts on the thread? Uh, I, I, uh, it's under orthodontics. Yeah, you can just do a search for OJW. It's called uh, um, Orthodontic Jaw Wiring, OJW, for Weight Control in the Dental Professional's Office by Dr. Teddy Rothstein. Yeah. Um, and uh, what, what, what have you thought of the, the um, questions How the, that people were asking? The, the, I mean, the, fir the first know, response, was, the first response was, wow, do people really get this done? Yeah, and yeah, the next yeah, one yeah. had a lady who asked if I would do this for her, and I said no. Um, I heard people used to get this done in like the 70s when I was an intern. Somebody get one of the OMFS to look at that wire job. Uh, much less invasive than a lap band. That, that's where I come in at. I mean, I've seen. Remember when Fen Fen came out? How, how many years ago was that? About 20 years ago? When, when, that, when the first concept of that came out? When what came out? When Howard. Fen Fen, the pharmaceutical. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, when people were, were dying, heart, 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 heart problems, right? People were using, using these medications in, in, in weird ways. So, when, um, I, I have, I, up until recently, I never really thought that it required medications i always thought that that the use of, 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 of medications for, for 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 weight control were always a bit risky because you don't know what you're getting and then as you started as they started to come out one by one they began to realize that there was a nasty side effect unknown side effect like one had slippage you know what slippage is when this okay slip it that was one let me just think of the other oh uh promotes thoughts uh, if you have thoughts of suicide <laughs> that was another one so and you read every one of them and recently almost every one of them has something about uh, suicidal ideation they call it <laughs> suicidal ideation so anyway medications are I always thought well that that it was a good reason to be to be in the middle. It was good, you know, p positioning jaw wiring in the position between bariatric surgery and medications made a good sense to me. People ought to people would be sensible to choose this method because it's it's safe. It's just it's just more predictable. I think I think more predictable, safer and more predictable. So do you remember back in the day when Smart Bite came out? Um, the Smart Bite device it was the first commercial product intended to aid in weight management. Do, do you remember the Smart Bite? A, no, but I remember. Small yeah. custom molded removable medical device that is placed on the roof of the mouth only yeah. while eating. The Smart Bite medical device helps you eat more slowly. You'll take smaller bites and chew more thoroughly so you can taste your food. This gives your body time and you know that was the thing back in the day I, I remember it no it's still it's still in there it's called the dds appliance they gave it the name of dds appliance you know to upscale it dds and essentially what it turned into be is a holy bite plate with um a, a bump built-in bump on the palate that does make it more difficult to, to eat rapidly and the idea was that if you ate slowly you would feel yourself fuller earlier 20 minutes earlier and you would then stop eating that's the advice and it's still out there and it's been that particular device has gotten a lot of bad press people who just if you just look you know the critique of that 
Joel Waring has no bad press. The only bad press it has comes from, you know, comes from the weight regain, you know, but that's good. That's for everybody. So it's silly. It's not even, it's not real. It's just not, you know, it's as good as, it's as good, if not better, as safe and effective as, 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 uh, as other devices are. It is a, it is a, it is a, an application that patients could choose, that logically choose and be successful at. Of course, you know, like I keep saying, what a lot, a lot depends on what success is. Let me tell you what I know is success as a, 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 a theoretical position. Success is when you lose at least five, no, is at least 10% of your weight and you, and it's all for a year. That what is what clinical nutritionists you know, or weight control people think is a really good goal to lose 10, or is it maybe it's 5%, I'm not sure, five or, to lose 5 or 10% and keep it off. It's just such a, such a, what do you call it, such an amorphous thing. What is success and who is successful and what do patients want and what can they hope to achieve, you know? I have to admit, it, it, it could make anybody confused, and and it's not, and and uh, I I only have a a fairly good handle on the whole thing, only because I've been so interested in all the variables that go into into weight con- control, but above all, you know, the consequences of obesity, which is what we're talking about, uh, can be pretty serious over the over the long term, over the long haul. I remember one statistic fascinating. I thought for every additional pound that you, that you have as an extra pound, the body has to, has to build about 500 miles more of, of circulation of circulatory system. So it's, I, I find that absolutely fascinating. Like imagine you're a hundred pounds overweight and therefore it's a hundred times 500, 500 more, uh, uh, 500 more miles of, 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 uh, of a vascular system. I say, oh, my God, it, it must be, it must be an enormous burden on the heart to have to pump blood through so much, uh, through, well, obviously it is because when you're overweight for a long period of time, you have one of the many consequences, one of the many serious consequences is heart failure, right? So have you shown this device since you're a um, dentist? And what is your PhD in, did you say? Um, physical? Oh, thank you. For, yeah, thank yep. you for asking. Physical anthropology. I know when I look at your face, I can see the skeletal on the inside. I can see your your skeletal. I know about jaws and teeth and the growth thereof. Uh, things about uh, the, the development, physical anthropology. I studied my dissertation was about class two division one kids. And it was the largest and first digital study that was, that was ever done. And it had 600, 600 patients in the sample. And it proved, it demonstrated more or less that when you have class two division one, the problem is not with your lower jaw being small or back or retreated. No, the problem is that most of the time the upper jaw is, has moved forward exactly as if you had taken your thumb and created it. That's the way that was the, that was the main thing. Otherwise the jaw was always the same. That was the result. But when, of I, my, when I, I listen to anthropologists today, they say all this malocclusion with Homo sapiens is just recently in the last couple hundred years. They say once you go back 5,000, 10,000 million years, they, they don't see any of this. And they're saying it's because we went from eating tough, tenacious roots and vegetables and chewing cartilage off an animal bone to now feeding our babies applesauce out of a jar. Um, I totally believe that. That I think that's a good, that was a workable theory. And that, that was the beg the uh, the people who invented the beg uh, the beg uh, the orthodontic device. That was the, that was their theory, and they made it. It was a good. It was well. People believed it, and people still do believe it because when you have a hard diet, what you're doing is not only wearing down your teeth vertically. 
but you're wearing interproximately. And so the teeth have a chance to move forward into the interproximal spaces. So those people, they didn't have impacted wisdom teeth like we do. So I agree with the theory that a soft diet has promoted uh, more impacted wisdom teeth, you know, things like that. And um, Or malocclusions in general. Malocclusions in general. I'm not so sure about about that. Certainly, certainly impacted and certainly impacted. But I think I don't think that whatever I don't think that has anything to do with, you know, click the three classes of malocclusion that we work with, you know, jaw, lower jaw, two forward, lower jaw, two back. You know, that's what we deal with when we're dealing with anything else other than crooked teeth. Jaw two forward and needs to be brought back or compromise of some sort, you know, or jaw too far back and it needs to be forward or some compromise that doesn't involve surgery. Always, you know, tra- surgery is a last resort, but always you have to address what the patient wants. You have to do what the chief complaint where, is. Where did your interest in all of this come from? I mean, of all the things you could have, uh, I mean, you're 77 years old. You could have retired and got obsessed with lighthouses, fishing, traveling. What made you get so interested in weight control? Great question. Well, my, my father was a, had, a, had compulsive eating so I could see him, you know, year after year, you know, trying to you're trying to get it under control. But I, it was like constant going to the refrigerator, open it up, you know, take something out. He's a, that that's probably what I think is the underlying reason that helped me move along. But what actually happened was a girl 12, 18 years ago comes from California and she has braces on her teeth and she says they're about to come off. And she says, hey, would you would you draw my would you wire my jaws? I said, well, what is that? <laughs> I said, well, he says, oh, in California, they do it for weight control. I said, really? Well, just tell me a little bit about it. And she did. And I said, okay. You know, all I had to do was leave six braces on, leave 12 braces on, and then and then figure out how to do the wiring, how to do the wiring. And and that's how I got started. And I liked it. I liked doing it. She was success, She was a successful patient. And, and then as I, over the years, have provided the service and been rewarded both financially, right? And by by praise from the patients, as as that has happened, I decided that I want to leave a legacy to dentistry. This is going to be my legacy to dentistry. And if they if it gets accepted, if Oregon says, we're good with it, Rothstein, hey man, I'll have left my legacy. That's it. So I, what was I'll the, add, what... added a new service. What was it like uh, presenting this to the Oregon Board of Dental Examiners? Were they open-minded? Can you? They, can you... they, they accept the. It was a request. I attended the board meeting. And I said, "Here's what I here's what I want you to do for me." And in papers, I you know I, I presented what I wanted, and they voted on it. Nine out of nine nine out of ten said we'll accept the. We will accept your question for we will take it under advisement. One didn't, and he's just he retired four months. He retired three months later. So I have sent them a, a large volume of supporting documentation to show them how the dental professional can provide this service in the environment of a healthcare team. You know, you have to be the kind of dentist who likes the idea of, of, of doing something that's maybe beyond, beyond fillings and cleanings and stuff like this. Something, you know, another step out, another adventure, another challenge. You know, that's what it was for me. That's exactly what it was for me. I had this, I had this, uh, confidence that I could do it and and that it worked and it, it seemed okay. And so over the 18 years, I've as I've provided this service, you get better at it and you understand the 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 the, the, the nuances of it, who might succeed, who might not succeed, how to pick patients, how to help people, how to always be there for them, how to be how to ha- help them so that they know you're always with them. I'm on call from my jaw wiring patients 24 seven. I was always like that. Even for, even as an orthodontist, everybody had my home telephone. 
you know what? You know how many people called me in the course of 35 years? Three. Giving your home telephone is a terrific idea. You know, just terrific. It's big practice building. You know, instead of having, you know, the ways that you try and you try and reach your doctor, and you know, well, most of them have provide for some kind of a some kind of emergency. But I didn't. They didn't have to. With me, boom. Today you got your braces on. Boom. Here's my home telephone. Call me anytime. Call me in the middle of the night if you want me. <laughs> so how did how did you end up moving from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, from New York to Oregon? What, hey, how did oh, that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife Franny has uh, children, has her older daughter here, at right, you know, within twenty minutes. Everything is within twenty minutes in Portland. You can't go. It only takes twenty minutes to go anywhere in Portland. But her her daughter lives here, and we decided she decided that we would be we would be. Um, it would be good to be near, near, near her. And, and again, I, we've lived in, in, in New York down in, in Brooklyn, you know, for a long, a long period of time. So we said, okay, enough, enough is enough. And I was very happy to, to close the practice and, and leave, uh, leave that, that area and move to this, this, this place in East Moreland. If you know anything about Portland, you know, it's not, it's a very nice Lush, lush community. Yeah, hold on a second. I just, just hit. You can see anything here? Show, can you see anything? What it's like out there? Yeah, I. Nice. I mean, really those nice. guys. Those guys are such environmentalists. Uh, they they think you're uh, um, littering if you throw aluminum or glass in your own trash can. <laughs> um. So what what does your what is the um, AAO thing of this? You, you you talk to the Oregon State Board of Dental Examiners. As you've been doing this over two decades, did you ever um, present this to the American Association of Orthodontists? How does your fellow orthodontists think about? I this? did. I, I did. It, 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 it was not received warmly. And the editor of the American Association, I spoke to him at the last AAO meeting in San Diego. <laughs> Funny, uh, and I, he said it's more. He says, we, author, speaking as the editor of the AAO journal, the editor of that, speaking from that capacity, he said, you know, it's more for, for general dentists than it is for, for orthodontists. I said, that's bullshit. You know, it's for, it's for anybody. It's for anybody who has a feeling for helping people who are overweight, and especially because of, because of compulsive eating. We can, we can help them. It behooves us to help them. It's a win-win situation. That's what I told the people in Oregon. Everybody wins. Oh, what did the editor... Ob obesity, obesity cost this state $160 billion. 160? No, or maybe it's... I don't know. Maybe it's $2 billion, Whatever. It costs them a lot of money. And if dentists can help people... Be, you know, prevent obesity or, you know, minimize it or treat it, treat it. Yeah, treat it. So it's it's for the good of the people. It really is good for everybody. Good for the good for dental professionals who who decide to they want to provide the service and good for the people who will benefit from it. And good for the state because the fallout of obesity is big time. You know, the consequences of obesity as a health you know, as a spreading health problem. It's very wide. It's very, it's very, uh, very wide. So why do you, what did the AEO guy say, though? I mean, why did he um, what not did they like say? it? What did they say? They never really, they never really gave a reason. They just didn't. They didn't, they didn't want to commit themselves. There was, uh, there was and, and I actually sent them a manuscript, and I sent the ADA a manuscript, and the manuscript is waiting for a receptive uh, pu publisher. Uh, NBI, you know the NBC, NBIC, that group from under. Um, it's a government, the one that the one that does government uh, 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 publications. What is the name of that? When, you know, NCBI, NBCI, NCBI. You know, so I I'm trying to submit it to them, but I think. I think I'm in luck because they asked me, the AAO asked me, now that I'm here on the West Coast, the West Coast people, you know, way more progressive, you know, will accept a lot more, a lot more things. I applied to present it in the Reno 
in at Reno in Reno at the 2018 convention, and they 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 they're gonna vet my paper, my abstract, and and it's I have a I have actually a good feeling. I'm always hopeful. I'm always optimistic because my life has always been pretty pretty charmed, and I've been pretty lucky in my life with nice things that have happened to me. So I think that Reno. The, the 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 Pacific Coast Orthodontic Society is holding their meeting in Reno, and I have submitted a paper on the same kind of thing I'm uh, that you guys are, are are looking at now. I'm submitted to them. Have you have you submitted it to uh, the editor of Orthotown Magazine, Dan Grobe? No, I never even knew of that venue. You know, I don't know of that venue. So if you, you're telling me that there's a venue that I don't know of and have an opportunity to submit it, I would. Yeah, we um we have Dental Town Magazine and website, but we also have Ortho Town Magazine and website. They were the only specialty who insisted on their own community where only they could be members. There could not be any non orthodontists and and they we started in ninety eight and they kept saying that all the way till two thousand six and no one else was saying it. The oral surgeons, endodontists, pediatric dentist, no one else was saying it. But so we just finally gave it to them and they seemed to love it. It seems like Half the orthodontists in the United States, um, they're 5,000 out of 10,000, regularly go to the site. So that, that's what they wanted, and um, that's their culture. Um, anyway, the editor of the magazine is Dan Grobe. He's an, I'm in Phoenix. He's an orthodontist in the Valley here. And um, How do you spell his last name? Dan, G-R-O-B-E? Uh, just G-R-O-B. G R O B, yeah. Yeah, and I think you should uh, ask him. And and what I do with Dental Town, I don't know if anybody knows this, but um, what we do is the reason our magazine is so um well read is because we do tested content. You know, a lot of magazines, one person will say, "Well, I got a gut feeling that this is a good article." And we we don't we don't play like that. What we like to do is we like to find authors who, when they post, everyone engages. Um, you know, so you've posted this and it has exploded. So I have, it doesn't matter if I what, agree what? with this or disagree yeah. or like it or anything. What matters is that it's tested content. So I would vote, I would tell Dan and our whole, um, editorial team would agree that since everybody is replying and commenting and viewing we have ample evidence that our readers would be interested in this because at the same time this thread is exploding, there's been hundreds of other threads and some of which get little or no activity. So we call it tested content. And uh, so I'm emailing um, you. Well, thank you. Yeah. That's terrific. And, if I get uh, my... Oh, ultimately, Howard, thank you very much. A, a lead that will help me get it published in the ortho town is that what you're talking about yeah with, so i just emailed dan grobe. The, i just emailed you dan grobe and i also sent it to the um editor of dental town magazine because um i think um if dan doesn't want it for ortho town uh tom may want it for dental town but again um um i mean it's a it's amazing how many people and it's polarizing it seems like everybody agrees or disagrees and i just I actually agree with this because I don't believe that humans rarely do anything because of one variable. They're not binomial. It's not up, down, left, right, forward, back with a human. They're just infinitely complex. They got a trillion circuits in their brain. I'm sure obesity is could be caused by several things, and this seems to be one of the more conservative treatments I've seen. I I I wouldn't want gastric bypass surgery. I think that's 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 really intense. I mean, and uh, I think people that have it, that, that that's a high risk surgery. Um, in, any surgery is high risk. Hell, the highest risk of any surgery is the anesthesia anyway, just being put to sleep regardless. Exactly. Yes. What, regardless of what they do, I, I wouldn't want to have an IV and be put to sleep and, and then it's irreversible and they're, you know, all these things. Like that. I, I think what you're doing is very conservative. And as far as humans, you never know what's going to motivate them or get them to do that. I mean, some people, something really tragic will happen to their life and they'll just go on and go all the way to the top and just fuel them to the top. Other people have the same tragedy and they fold their cards and go home. So you've been doing this. How many years have you been doing this? About 18. So you've been doing 18. this 18 and you're 77. 
I'm 54 and I've never done it. Who am I? <laughs> who am serious. I to argue with somebody who has a PDS oh. and a P? You have two doctor degrees. I have one, and uh, I'm uh, so I'm uh, tw so. If you would have had me at age 23, I could be your son. I I I think you're onto something. And also, what I think you're doing is you're taking everybody's brain out for a jog. It's making people think. Um, you know, it's, it's making them think. And also the parameters, when people sit, start saying, well, it's not in your scope, um, I'm sorry, but you're a doctor with a human, and those lines are very blurred. Like you say, sleep apnea. Why do I need a prescription from an MD? You know, every time I get a physical, every year I go to my doctor and get a physical, and when he comes to the mouth, he has me open up, and he takes a popsicle stick and shines line there and tells me to say, aw, and then he's done and he throws away the popsicle. And I'm just thinking, okay, I've been a dentist 30 years. What the hell did you just do? I mean, I have no idea what you just did, but he's a doctor, you know? And um, <laughs> if, uh, and, and look, look, look my, my biggest pet peeve, I think where dentists kill the most people, where they actually kill them is the fact that our boards haven't given us the right to give flu shots. I mean, 8,000 to 38,000 Americans die each year from the flu. They're usually grandma and grandpa. And when you study, where was the last time they entered the healthcare system? The top three, it was always the dentist, the hygienist. The hygienist has four years of college and can't give a vaccine. But if I go to Walgreens or CVS, a farm tech with a nine-month program can yeah, give yeah. me a flu shot. Same thing, with yeah. the, um, same thing with the doctor's... Uh, HPV causing oral cancer. Why are dentists not at the front lines of getting all these kids under age 10 vaccinated for HPV? And it's because that's our cancer in our mouth. That that's oral cancer, oral and pharyngeal cancer. So I'm, so I think the oral systemic link and and people's general disdain for regulation, big government. I mean, most most humans don't want to be told what to do. I mean that that's why you know you just yeah you know like this. So if if you're got yeah, two doctorates, you're seventy seven years old. You've been doing this for twenty years, eighteen years. You've done it two hundred times. I mean to me that's that's all the evidence makes. And and when Fenfen -Fen came out, I saw so many patients that were so happy because they were taking that pill and they lost. Uh, some of my patients lost four hundred pounds. I had a couple six hundreds go to under two. And when they took that away, I'll never forget, I had about six patients who, when they took that pill away, because, you know, someone died or, or you know, whatever, I, I'm not an expert in any of that, but they cried. I mean, they absolutely cried. <laughs> totally because believe it. They, they slowly, three or four years later, gained the weight back. But uh, um, it, it's emotion. you know, it's so complex. You know, the food, I, I think one of the biggest problems, obesity, that no one talks about is, you know, I, I have an MBA. You have a DDS and a doctor in anthropology. I have a DDS and a master's in business administration. And um, when you go back to 1950, food was about 30% of your disposable income. And now it's yeah. 10%. So when you lower the price of anything, you sell a lot more. So the portions got bigger, the prices plummeted. And now any poor person can walk into any fast food restaurant and order a thousand delicious ca calories in three <laughs> minutes. Right. And so the food is faster, it's cheaper, it's lower cost. Um, I mean, I mean, it's just. Uh, I I think uh, if you want less of something, uh, you should and less tax nutritious. It. Yeah, you, you should tax Maybe. it. And if you want to, uh, if you want it to go away, tax it and regulate it. And I think that. Uh, um, and then when and then when people start ta talking about, well, we need to have a sugar tax. Or we need to start taxing soft drinks. Then the typical American who just, the typical American just hates all forms of government. They are the most anti-government people I've ever seen. So they're not going to want to tax their Coca-Cola or Pepsi or just raw sugar or I that, mean, the, that... least, the least they could do. I mean, the least they could do is stop giving corn farmers subsidies, agriculture subsidies, when they're making High fructose corn syrup is subsidized by the federal government, who then has to turn around and pay for obesity, diabetes, dental decay, Medicaid, Medicare. Not to mention, why are you giving farmers subsidies when you have $19 trillion in debts? What everybody should be saying is, we are going to raise taxes 
and cut spending. But since it's a democracy, you can't say that. So you're going to say, we're going to give you a big tax cut and give you a bunch of more free stuff. So it, it's complicated. <laughs> but I right. think, I think let, let's just say you've done 200 cases in 18 years. How many of those people would do it again if they had to do it all over? Okay, but how many said they would never do it again? Or they regretted doing it? Or they were upset that they did this? They never put it in terms, never like, never like that. It was a waste. I've had a few people who said it was a waste. Yes, it's true. It, it probably was a waste. Uh, it didn't work out for them. It's just, you know, treatment that didn't work out. Look, I told you the lady in my in the in the in the film in the in the major film that I made, she failed. I, I, I had I pinned my hopes that was, she was going to be the glamour girl. Turns out, three days after she left, she had to come back. You know, and she came from Georgia. They come from all you, over. You said that you gave your patients your home phone number. Only three called you. What if someone is listening right now and they actually want to call you and talk to you? Are they allowed to? Of course. What, what is your, what every is your... post? Every post has my name and telephone number. Howard. Oh, every okay. so every, every post... one of them. Okay. I think uh, when you say, uh, oh, I have one last question. I have one last question. So if I had my mouth, OJW, orthodontic jaw wiring for weightcontrol.com, um, what if I had to go to work? You know, what, what if I worked at Starbucks? Well, um, can I still well, go to work and do my, when can you, I still talk and do my when, job? When you come to me, I ask you to please look at the list I have provided here. And if you are in this list of, of, of things that, you, that make you a bad candidate, then you should think twice. For instance, maybe you're a singer. It doesn't make very much sense for you to do that because every time, you know, you'd have to keep snipping out the wires. Or supposing you're a teacher. Now, even though the claim is that speech is perfectly clear. And as a matter of fact, you can test it, Howard. Just bring your teeth near one another and just talk with your teeth near one another and you'll see how easy it is to talk. Because if you look at me, I'm talking in the OJW position because it's the position that you're in and all of the listeners who are listening, it's the same position that they're in now. It's the rest position, right? So you can speak from the rest position easy. The only time you need to go ever beyond the rest position is when you're eating or when you have to speak. So an answer, a continued answer to that question is when people, when you, when the, when the dental professional selects the patients, he makes sure that there are that, that the, there are no impediments. For example, I had a patient who I, I did it for, and then it turned out that, and even though I had asked her, even though there's a question about the size of the pills they take, she's claimed that she couldn't get a particular tablet in her mouth. She couldn't get it to the side. Maybe the wisdom teeth were blocking it, you know. So, so it's, you have to carefully uh, question people, uh, interrogate them, uh, get their informed consent, uh, read their document, read their medical dental history, and you have to be careful about who you select. And if you, if you are careful and, and charge a high fee, <laughs> Then, then you're likely to have a patient who will succeed, or at least as a minimum, never blame you because your job is only take care of the teeth and the gums and the jaw joint. Don't let anything happen. If they need to lose weight, then they either do it with their own liquid diet or they do it with the help of a dietitian or a registered nutritionist or, or, or and or they get the help of, of, of a counselor to help them with the, the driving, the innate driving cause uh, of, of the need to eat, you know, the emotional, the emotional need to eat. All so right. Well, that was, that was the pleasure? fastest hour ever. And we are going to, um, this is going to be the next video out because I want to post it on that thread because everybody's, um, every, that thread, everybody's loving it, enjoying it, arguing with it, agreeing, disagreeing, and it's going to just be so <laughs> amazing, this technology where we're, you know, we're 1,500 miles apart, and yeah. we were able to do this. It is amazing. Video. I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, it's if you would have told wonderful. me that we'd be doing this when I was in college, I would have thought you were crazy, and here we I just know. did it.
So thank you for the technology. I love the fact that we're both wearing bow ties. See, I was trying yes. to match you. I was trying to match you. I wore a bow yeah, tie crazy. just to match I, you, Teddy. It makes me so happy to see you in a bow tie. You know, I did it just for you. I was going to do my hair like yours, but I didn't have. <laughs> I ran out of time. Oh, one more thing. Last thing I want to say. One more thing. July twenty eighth, my abstract on this subject was accepted in Rome. I'm going to Rome, and I'm going to present the paper to the fourteenth annual 14th um, International Conference of uh, Clinical Nutritionists. Nice. So it's going to be I a big... A, what do you love big, more, big, Rome or Venice? Well, I've been in Venice. I love Venice, except that it's sinking and wet. <laughs> sinking, not stinking. Sinking. Um, but I haven't been to Rome. You know, my to... oldest boy, Eric, out of all the countries that my boys I've drug him to, Eric still says that Venice was his favorite place. But he's a boy. I think it was because he was about, I don't know, 14, something like that. And he just couldn't get over their lasagna. I mean, he wanted to, <laughs> every night, he wanted to go back to there the is. same restaurant and eat the same lasagna. You I went, I did get, go. You can't yeah. get Italian food in the United States. Everybody that tells you you can get the best Italian food in the United States, maybe there's a restaurant or two in little italy in manhattan but it's never like it is in venice or rome yeah yeah sure and i want to thank you just let me thank you for helping me to put put my 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 subject on the map it's very very kind of you just straight out you know and and i'm 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 very pleased and happy that that you you like it and you think it's think it's worthy think it's worthy you know that's all that's more is more um, uh, food food for food for thought and and um I instantly, you know I instantly, you're, in, you're instrumental in me keeping have uh, reaching my goal which is that's going to be ojw drawing is going to be in the medical book of treatment and in the dental book of treatment it's going to be coded in there. And if that happens, then, then, then I will really have a reach. If it happens in my lifetime, boy, will I be happy. But that's the overall mission and goal. And, and one last thing, which I did post on the, on the site, is this, is this. It's actually how it works, the mechanism. And it's not, you know, it's, a, the, me, it's the mechanism, the seven ways that it can work to help people, how it actually works, aside from the obvious. What's the obvious? It helps you to diminish your calories. But after that, you know, there's still more psychology behind it. At least that's that's what how I viewed it. We, we did our hour. That's our brand. They're commuting to work, and we don't want them sitting in the parking lot waiting to go in. And they and we're going to post this video on uh, in that website. Went Ryan, how long do you think it'll take to get up? Tomorrow this time, it'll be online. Teddy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Goodbye, Howard. Thank you for everything. Hello, I'm Dr. Ted Rothstein, Brooklyn Heights orthodontist and the inventor of orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. Today, I'm going to demonstrate orthodontic jaw wiring in real time. When the OJW is done correctly, the jaws can move between two and four millimeters vertically and laterally. This draw between the teeth. Take your wire and wrap it around number one. Then bring it around and under number two. over number three and out to number six. Then take the top half of the wire, wrap it around number four, over five, and meet the strand at number six. Do a little twist with your finger. Take the twisting instrument, grab the two ends, Wrap them four or five times. Trim the tail. And tuck the tail out of harm's way. Remove the straw. Voila, orthodontic jaw wiring. My fellow professionals, thank you for your time.